Hey what's up it's Hugo here and today I'm going to be doing a Photoshop tutorial showing you how to make 3D rotating text. Uh, so as you can see right now on the screen this is how it looks like and it's great if you want to use it on your videos uh, and the corner of your videos you can just uh, place it there and leave it rotating during the video if you want a little animated uh, watermark for your videos or you can just use it for whatever you want it doesn't really matter that much but we're going to show you how to do this in, in Photoshop CS6. I've already made a tutorial quite a while back showing this in CS5 but uh, there was a lot of questions. Uh, in the comments and all that stuff and a lot of people having issues so I want to make this tutorial again showing you but this time in CS6 because it's even easier actually now uh, that we're in CS6 so let's go ahead and get started let's start a new document here in Photoshop and call it, call it uh, text rotation and we're gonna make it 800 by 500 pixels in size now this doesn't really matter it's really up to you and we're gonna have a transparent background and go ahead and click OK. Now the first thing you want to do is simply go ahead and create some text. So using the text tool, uh, simply click on your canvas and um, create your text. Now you might want to move it around so take the cursor tool and move it around. I'm just going to center it here. There we go. And go ahead and choose uh, choose your text. Choose the font that you want to stick with. Uh, so whatever font you prefer to use. I I'm going to use Exo font and the bold version of it. Or maybe Demi bold. Just slightly less bold. Uh, bold or however you pronounce that. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so we've created our text. We can add some fancy layer styles and stuff like that if you want to now. And, and choose the colors of it as well. So I'm going to make it actually slightly lighter like this. And uh, simply because usually uh, videos are rather dark, or at least in my case, because I usually have rather dark backgrounds, and uh, it, it fits better to have a, a, a lighter, a lighter text. But you can always change everything once you've actually created the rotation. So that's a really cool thing in CS6 compared to CS5. In my previous tutorial, I did not show how to do that, but now in CS6, you can actually create the whole rotation, create the whole text in 3D and stuff, and then later on still change. The actual text, the size, the color, and stuff like that. So that's a really cool feature they've added now. So don't worry about that. You can always change it later. So let's go ahead and create, uh, make this text a 3D, shall we? Uh, let's go ahead in the in this uh, menu of Photoshop, go to 3D and click on New 3D Extrusion from selected uh, selected layer. So you have a little warning here. Just go ahead and click Continue, and then. Uh, you should have a 3D text and you'll automatically be changed to the 3D workspace. And uh, here you can just rotate around and you can see that your text is all 3D-ish, which is awesome. You um, can adjust the camera roughly. Now, as you can see here, we have, uh, instead of the layers now, you have the, the 3D panel. And here you can choose uh, the scene, the camera, and your text. This is mainly what we're going to focus on, these three things, or actually mainly the camera and the text. And all the things that are under that, don't worry about it. That's uh, more advanced stuff, but we're not going to cover that at all. Um, so uh, I just want to you know, mention the difference between the camera, which is going to move uh, only the camera around your text. And if you choose your text, uh, it's actually going to rotate the text itself. So big difference, uh, especially in this tutorial. But the first thing I usually do is uh, change the depth of the text because it might it might be a little too... Uh, too thick uh, in depth and it might not look so good when actually rotating you don't want to have a, a too thick of a text because then it's it's difficult to read um, while rotating so let's go ahead and create the text here and in the properties panel which should be right on top of that uh, by default already uh, you can go ahead and choose the extrusion depth so as you can see this will change the depth of it and we're gonna make it uh, around around the 25 Something like tw 25 uh, seems to be just good. I actually quite like it. It's not too thick and uh, it's, it's a good size for, for um, rotating it. So once you have uh, find uh, your depth that you like, uh, you can go ahead and just leave it like that. Also, it has some shape presets here, by the way, if you want some uh, some bevel or, or however you say that, the, the caps um, of your text, if you want to change that. Some of the presets actually look pretty nice. Um, there's some really fancy ones and 
stuff like that. So you can look into that, uh, especially something like this, you know, that, that's pretty crazy stuff. Uh, but we're just going to keep it simple. And we're going to keep it to uh, a simple, uh, simple bevel here on the edges. So I think that looks pretty good. So if you want to choose that, go ahead and do that. Usually what I also do here is I uncheck the shadows here because once you actually have the text rotating on your video, you don't really want shadows, at least in my opinion, because, you know, they don't really make sense, the shadows, simply because they're going to be just rotating on your video. So go ahead and, and, and check that off if you don't want any shadows. And now we're ready to start animating uh, your text. So I'm just going to center the camera a bit here. There we go. And go ahead and click on the, the double click actually on the timeline button, which should be right under your 3D uh, canvas here. It should already be there and will pop up if you double click it. And you can go ahead and create a new video timeline. And you'll see you have a timeline popping up with uh, just your text because that's the only layer we have right now and a long timeline. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and start animating it on here. And let me just enter the camera a tad bit. Now, you might see if you if you uh, if you're on the camera here, uh, if you go outside of the text, you can just rotate it as much as you want. And it's the same with the with the text. Uh, you can rotate the text like so, or you can uh, make it get closer to you or further away from you. So that's pretty much the controls you have uh, in case you did not already notice that by yourself. But that's pretty basic stuff. Now, uh, in our animation here. Uh, in our timeline, sorry, uh, we're going to go ahead and expand uh, the MacBook layer, your text layer. We're going to scroll all the way down to 3D meshes. And then we're going to select your text here and we're going to click on the stopwatch. Well, actually, first I'm going to go with the timeline all the way to second zero or the start. And click on the stopwatch. And by clicking the stopwatch, it means that it's going to record everything you do to this uh, layer or at least to this, this uh, text layer. So if I'm going to rotate my text, it's going to record that. Um, so let, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and uh, scroll all the way to about two seconds in the video, for example, and uh, go ahead and rotate your text. Now, rotating your text is pretty simple. You just select the text itself, and then uh, you have to make sure you're outside with your cursor of the text, so you're not actually on it, because then you'll just scale it up and down or make it get closer. Um, so you want to be sure uh, you're outside of your text and you have a little rotating cursor uh, and then you can start rotating as you can see. So you can rotate in tons of different ways. Now, if you want to make sure that it rotates in a straight way or at least exactly uh, on only one one dimension, uh, or however you say that, two dimensions actually, sorry, um, you want to hold shift on your keyboard and you'll notice that it's going to start rotating um, straight pretty much. Like so. So uh, hold shift on your keyboard to do straight rotations, whether it's up and down or, or left and right. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go to the left and we're going to rotate it to about 180 degrees. Now you want to make sure it's not 100% 180 degrees because then it's just going to, if it's more than 180 degrees, it's just going to, if you rotate it this way, uh, but it's even more than when you're actually, because it's recording just the position of it, it's going to, uh, the camera is going to move the other way around or it's going to look as if it's rotating the other way around. So you want to make sure it's, it's not more than 180 degrees you're rotating it uh, in, in, in the first action here. So if you want to make sure how much degrees you rotated it, you can go back to the properties panel. Sorry about that. You can go back in the properties panel and click on this little coordinates button and you'll see here uh, exactly how much degrees you've rotated it. So in my case, it's 176, so that's fine and you're 179, so that's uh, just fine. So we're gonna go ahead and once we've done that, go uh, maybe a little further, almost to the four second, uh, four second into the video and rotate it even more now. Uh, sorry, rotate it like so, something like this. There we go, so uh, once you've done that, you also want it maybe to repeat itself. So right now, as you can see, uh, it's not, it's not in the same position as, as it was at the start of the video here. There you go. So it's not exactly at the same, so we want to make sure it's exactly the same. So all you do is you just go a little bit further into the timeline, and then you simply put all the rotation coordinates here uh, to zero. There we go. 
and now it should be exactly 000, zero, zero as you can see and that's exactly the same coordinates as it was at the start of the video so you can see if you scroll through the timeline you can actually uh, see every time when you release your mouse uh, the coordinates of the rotation uh, change so uh, that's pretty handy and it should uh, just get back to its original state and there you go you did a full rotation of text now you can do tons of different rotations you can even make it move or um, make it rotate like uh, vert vertically uh, but this is pretty much the idea of how to make a 3d text rotation uh, so you've rotated it and now as you can see we're pretty much done at four seconds in into the video so we're gonna make uh, our workspace a little uh, shorter so we don't need to render out this all this useless uh, all this useless part of the video here so you just go ahead and scroll here and get the little workspace slider and slide it all the way to uh, to pretty much just after the end of the rotation so there you go you have your fill rotation so if you want to just quickly have a look on how it looks without all the guides and all the, the stripes here showing up uh, and just want to see how it looks go ahead and go all the way to the beginning of your timeline here and go ahead and click on the play button and you'll see the text rotation uh, exactly how we rotate it or how we um, animated it now we're rendered to uh, now we're ready to render out the video now the reason I'm adding uh, this part to the actual video on how to render this text out is because it's quite important if you want to transparent background to tweak the options so everything looks good so go ahead and click on this little button here uh, next to the on the timeline um, panel and just click on there and you have a bunch of options here and go ahead and click on the render video and this will uh, pop up a new window here where you have tons of options uh, of how you want to render out your video uh, now these are all pretty basic options if you're already used to uh, video rendering uh, so this sh it should be pretty familiar to you but you can go ahead and, and choose a name for your uh, for your uh, rotation or your movie uh, that you're making uh, select where you want to save it in this case um, and all that cool stuff so that's up to you you can choose your encoder which we're just going to use the Adobe media encoder which I recommend by the way you use except if you have your own uh, and then by default I think the format is on h.264 now if you do h.264 you will not be able to have a transparent background simply because h.264 does not uh, allow alpha channels and if you don't know what that is it doesn't allow you to have a transparent background so that's pretty much the idea so you want to go ahead and go on the QuickTime format now you do need to have the QuickTime codec installed on your computer if you're on the Windows uh, it's not always on there by default if you're on the Mac it should already be installed so no problem um, and then for the preset you can just choose you know whatever preset we're just going to use animation high quality uh, it doesn't really matter which preset you use but of course that's really up to you. You can choose the frame rate of your document. In this case, we're going to use 30 frames per second. The range, which is going to be the work area. So I'm leaving all these things uh, as default as, as they are. And then here, the alpha channel, you want to make sure that you do have this activated. So I'm going to go for straight unmatted. And what this does, I mean, I know it all sounds really complicated and stuff, but the basic idea is this is just going to remove the background. You're going to have a transparent background on, on your movie. So uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, and then the 3D quality here, um, interactive is probably the lowest quality you're going to have. You're going to have a lot of jagged edges. It's not going to look that great. Uh, and then you have ray trace draft and ray trace final. Now, uh, ray trace final is going to be the best quality you're going to get. It's going to have very smooth edges. Everything's going to be rendered out uh, at the best it can. But it's going to take the most time though. So uh, if you want the best result, you should go with ray trace final. But for this video, I'm just going to go ahead and go for Ray Trace Draft simply because it renders a little faster. It usually renders for me, in my opinion, about four times faster when I use the Draft option. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, do the uh, Draft option here and click on Render. And you'll see a little window popping up here saying Exporting Video. And that's going to take just a few seconds here. And then you should have uh, your rotation or your text rotation in this case. So there we go, it's about done here now, just finished uh, exporting the video and there we go, we pretty much have it on, on our desktop here. Uh, so I can just quickly pop it up even though my desktop is pretty cluttered, so sorry about that. Uh, but here we have it, this is the text rotation. Now as you can see we still have a black background but that's simply because we're previewing it here uh, in the actual um, 
Apple Finder thingy. So if we're actually going to put it inside a video editor, which does support alpha channels, uh, in this case I use uh, ScreenFlow. So this is one of the video I'm using, uh, videos I was working on uh, recently. Uh, so don't bother about all the text uh, or the video editing stuff going on. I'm just going to go ahead and bring in the uh, text rotation here that we have and uh, drag it in. And as you can see, we can just place it anywhere and you'll see that it will just rotate. Sorry about the, the sound here. Um, but it will just rotate if I just move this along. Whoop, there we go. It will just rotate over our uh, our screen here uh, without any background, so it just rotates over it, which is uh, really, really cool. And that's exactly what we were looking for. In my opinion, it still looks pretty good, even though it's not the uh, ray traced final. Uh, but that's because the resolution is, is rather small, so you don't really see that much of a difference. Uh, just before I end the video, I just want to quickly go back in Photoshop, and since I mentioned in the beginning of the video that you could still change your text, you could still change uh, the color of your text and, and the font of your text, uh, once you create the rotation, I quickly want to show you guys how to actually do that. Uh, so go ahead and click on your timeline on your uh, text here, and <clears throat> sorry about that go into your 3d panel here and choose your text or select it and we'll go back to the properties panel here where uh, we we uh, at the beginning of the video we chose here all the effects and the extrusion depth and stuff we can still change that and if you want to change the actual text go ahead and click on the button here called edit source and once you create that uh, click on that you'll be able to actually change your text to anything so if you want your text to be something else uh, go ahead and and just um, just uh, put whatever text you want there and go ahead and save the document so control or command s to save your document and then you can go back into the previous tab we were and you'll see that your uh, your text the whole text rotation here uh, is pretty much exactly the same except you've changed the text uh, you can also do that with color you, you can change the color uh, here in the in this panel here to whatever you prefer so if you want it uh, let's say red for example uh, you, you can do that uh, so that's no problem you can of course also change the font and stuff it's all in the same kind of way uh, so that's pretty much what i want to quickly show you guys before ending off uh, this video that you could still change the text which is a really cool feature in cs6 only so you cannot uh, edit the text later on in earlier versions of photoshop it never uh, supported that in the past so uh, that's it for this video. I'll thank you a lot for watching. Uh, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you want more uh, Mac tutorials or uh, tutorials in general. Uh, give it my video a like if uh, it helped you out. And uh, go ahead and comment down below if you have any questions, any problems, uh, something that didn't work out. You can go ahead and send me a personal message or just uh, comment down below. So I'll thank you a lot for watching uh, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.